Okay, we're back with section three, video number three. Section three is chemical quantities and stoichiometry. And in this video, I told you I was gonna devote it to empirical and molecular formulas. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So I figured the best way was just to introduce some terms and then immediately go into some sample problems. Sample problems and examples are the best way to kind of retain this information. So determining empirical and molecular formulas. What is an empirical formula? Well, an empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. All right then, so what is the molecular formula? Well, sometimes the empirical formula and the molecular formula are the same, but by definition, the molecular formula is the exact formula of a compound. So if the exact formula of a compound happens to have a simple whole number ratio of atoms, then they, they match. But generally in this video, because I'm trying to show you the difference, they're not gonna match. Empirical formula, simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound, molecular formula, the exact formula. So how are they related? They're related by this formula in the box. The molecular formula is equal to some multiplier times the empirical formula. And this multiplier we call n, and n is the whole number integer, one, two, three, et cetera. All right, let's get right in. I'm gonna do two sample problems to help kind of hammer this topic home. First example, suppose a compound is 71.65% chlorine, 24.27% carbon, and 4.07% hydrogen. So it's got three elements. Its molar mass is 98.96 grams per mole. Find the empirical and molecular formula. Well, you always find the empirical formula first. Just think of it like in alphabetical order or something, E before M. You find the empirical formula first. That is kind of prior to rule number one. We're gonna focus on empirical formula. Once we get the empirical formula, it's very quick to get the molecular formula after that. So most of these rules are how to find the empirical formula. Here's mini rule number one. Well, they give us percentages. So if we just assume we have 100 grams of material, if it's 100 grams of material, those percentages immediately become grams. 71.65% chlorine, assume 100 grams, well then it's 71.65 grams of chlorine, 24.27, grams of carbon instead of percent, 4.07 grams of hydrogen. Convert all the grams, all three values in grams to moles by dividing by the respective atomic masses. So we end up with 2.021 moles of Cl, 2.021 moles of carbon, and 4.04 .04 moles of hydrogen. So step one, convert grams to moles. Step two, we're gonna divide all three of these mole values by the same number, and that number is the lowest number of moles, 2.021, right? So we end up with one mole of Cl, one mole of carbon, and two moles of hydrogen. So I've double underlined those. We're gonna take those three double underlines, and in mini rule number three here, I guess I could call it rule number three, we're gonna combine the moles of each atom into an empirical formula. Now, if carbon is present, you always list him first. So carbon's listed first if all the other guys are non-metals as well. So C, H2, Cl. We don't call it C1, H2, Cl1. The ones are understood. So it's C, H2, Cl. Now that's the empirical formula. It might be the molecular formula, but it's the empirical formula. That is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms, okay? So, and it says there in parentheses what I already said, carbon always first if all the elements are non-metals. Now, since we have to also find the molecular formula, there's two additional steps. Usually it's just steps one, two, and three to find the empirical formula. And these two next steps are relatively straightforward. If you remember, they gave us the molar mass. Okay, the molar mass they said was, I believe, 98.96 or something like that. But 
Step number four says calculate the empirical formula mass because we didn't have that. We just found the empirical formula, right? So let's add up one carbon, two H's, and one Cl. Okay, so the empirical formula mass is 1 times 12.01 plus 2 times 1.01 plus chlorine, which is 35.45. This is 49.48 grams per mole. So the, my empirical formula weighs 49.48 grams per one mole. Okay, now I can use the boxed equation from a few pages back. I know that said formulas, but I can put the respective masses into each as well. Here's what I'm going to do. So first of all, rule number five, plug empirical mass and molar mass into the boxed formula from earlier. So earlier on the left, it was molecular formula. I'm going to, have to go ahead and put molar mass in there though, because these, these are all relative and they're all kind of proportional. 98.96 equals N times 49.48. N is clearly 2, so I multiply my empirical formula through by 2. If I distribute the 2 through the CH2Cl, I end up with C2H4Cl2. Okay, and this is my molecular formula. All right, a little squiggly line means we're going to move on to another example. In this example, it says the following a compound containing only nitrogen and oxygen. So this is going to be N something, O something, right? We've only got two elements. Compound containing only nitrogen and oxygen is 30.4% nitrogen by mass. If the molar mass of this compound is 92 grams per mole, what is the molecular formula? Now, you notice how they don't come out and directly ask you to find the empirical formula. There's no way to find the molecular formula this way unless we find the empirical formula first. All right. Now, are we all okay knowing that oxygen is 69.6% here? Okay, 30.4% nitrogen by mass, and there's only two types of atoms, means that the other percentage leading up to 100 is oxygen. So rule number one, we assume 100 grams. So we got 30.4 grams nitrogen, 69.6 grams oxygen. We convert to moles. Divide by the atomic masses of nitrogen and oxygen respectively, we get 2.17 moles, 4.35 moles. Divide by the lowest number for both, 2.17. We end up with an empirical formula of NO2. Okay. NO2. This is my empirical formula. If I add up a nitrogen and two a nitrogen and two oxygens on the periodic table, that would give me the empirical mass or the empirical formula mass. And I'm going to do that now in step four. So I got one nitrogen which weighs 14.01 grams per mole on the periodic table, two oxygens each weighing 16. I end up with an empirical formula mass or empirical mass of 46.01 grams per mole. All right, so now we're gonna use that boxed formula where it's molecular formula or molar mass equals N times the empirical formula or the empirical formula mass. N is two once again, so we multiply this through two times NO2, I get a molecular formula of N2O4. Okay. Notice how the empirical formula is just a, the simplest whole number ratio of that, NO2. Okay. All right, now I have a question because the, the two examples we did, they worked out really nicely. Here's my question. What do you do if after step two above, you don't get these nice clean numbers? You don't get one mole of N, two moles of O. What if you got 1.33 moles of N and two moles of O. The two is all right, but the 1.33, there's no way you can round that down to one. It's not like it's 1.01 or 0.99 or something. So 1.33 moles is equal to one and one third moles, which is equal to the improper fact, fraction four thirds mole. So we have four over three moles of N, and then we still have laying around our two moles of O. I need to get those clean. 
So I have to multiply through by 3, and I get N406. Now I realize that's not the simplest whole number ratio, if you will, but I can't keep it N1.3302. The best I can do here is 4 moles N, 6 moles of O, N406. So that's kind of why I put, quote, new empirical formula. All right? I needed that additional step. I had to multiply by 3. If it were a 1.67, right, I'd also have to multiply by 3 because it's going to be 5 over 3 moles of N. If it were a 1. Point, I'm down in the bottom left corner of your notes. If, if it were a 1.5, I'd have to multiply by a 2 to get the 3 halves equaling 3. And that just takes practice, okay? But you need to get the numbers clean before you can really have your empirical formula finished. All right? So that's it for video number 3. All right, we've been talking about section three, which is kind of like a chapter three, chemical quantities and stoichiometry. In the next video, video number four, we're going to start to get into chemical equations and chemical reactions. Chemical equations kind of synonymous with chemical reactions because the way we show a chemical reaction in our notes or on paper is by writing a chemical equation to describe it. We're going to have to learn how to balance those. And then we're going to finally use that term stoichiometry, start with what you're given, put it over one, convert from some amount of reactant or product to another amount of reactant or product within the balanced equation. Okay, and that's, called, and that's what stoichiometry is. So stick around, video number four is coming up next.